Whether you're a student, a small business owner, content creator, or just someone who wants to get more digitally organized, you have to check out Notion if you haven't already. But first things first, what is Notion? It's a super flexible digital notebook tool that can be used for, well, anything. And this is great, but this flexibility also can be super overwhelming because there are so many ways you can essentially do the same thing. Now, I'll be the first to admit, there have been plenty of days where I've spent more time working on my Notion workspace than actually working, which is exactly why I'm making this video right now. So you can understand Notion once and for all and get back to the task at hand. So let's dive into Notion. But before you dive into your Notion journey, ask yourself, what are you trying to accomplish with Notion? Because not everything has to fit into Notion. I know that's something I struggled with when I first found it. I was eager to just dump everything that I've ever known or digitally had into Notion, but not everything needs to be there. Okay, so when you open up Notion for the first time, this is the screen that you're going to be greeted with. Now, over here on the left-hand side, we have the sidebar. So this is where you can navigate through all of your Notion pages as well as your Notion sub pages. And it's broken down into a, a couple different sections here. So there's the favorite sections up top, but right now we don't have any favorites. Then there is a section for team spaces, shared spaces, as well as your own private Notion workspace. And at the top here, you can also switch into different accounts. So I am using uh, a brand new account here for this tutorial. Uh, this is my main account over here uh, with the big old, big old brain. You can also come here to the settings and members area, and this is where you can change any settings uh, to your specific Notion account. Uh, come in here to settings, change your image, add any people to your accounts or upgrade your account, um, things like that. Now over in this section is also where you can find templates. So if you click on templates here, you can see a whole bunch of templates. <laughs> These templates uh, are made by Notion as well as other creators. Um, so yeah, what I would encourage you to do if you're brand new to Notion, one, watch the rest of this video, but two, go ahead, check out some of these templates, download them into your own Notion workspace, play around with them, because uh, it can be a really good starting place and a good place to learn how to build what it is that you're trying to build. But yeah, they literally have templates for just about anything. Um, you know, whether you're in marketing product, engineering design, sales, they have something for everyone here. Okay, so to get started here on this Notion Basics tutorial, let's just go ahead and start a new page. So there's a couple different ways you can start a new page. You can come up here to the top left and just click new page. Um, or you can also see there's a little shortcut right here, command N. So we go ahead and press new page and I'm gonna go ahead and just full screen that. And here we go, here is a brand new page. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this page a title. This is my pizza diary. We're coming and write down every single time time that I ate pizza because, well, I love pizza. And as you can see, we created this new page and now it's over here uh, on the left-hand side in the navigation bar. So we named the page. Now we can also do a couple other things here to spice this page up a bit. Uh, if we press here to add icon, um, it's gonna give it a random icon, but that's not a very good icon for my pizza diary. So we go ahead and click on that icon and we can choose from either emojis, um, these little bit simpler icons, as well as upload our own custom icon. So for this page, we're gonna go to the emojis and I'm just gonna type in pizza and boom, there we go. This is really starting to come together. But there's one more thing we can do to really customize this Notion page. So if we come up to the top here, we can hit this add cover button. Now, if we click that, uh, there's a couple different options here. Again, just like with the icon, it's gonna randomly pick a cover for us, but if you know we hover on it, we can see this change cover. So if I click on that, uh, we can scroll through the gallery, which these are all just Notions images. Um, and there's some cool ones in here for sure. Uh, but if that's not really catching, you know, it's not really fitting your style, uh, what you can do is go ahead and upload your own as well as, you know, you can go find um, a link online and you can actually put GIFs in here. So you can have sort of like a moving, alive, animated background. Uh, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna click here on Unsplash and we're just gonna type in some pizza because again, this is my pizza diary. So I want to be frothing at the mouth. Oh, this is a good looking picture here. Uh, every time I'm in my pizza diary. So let's go ahead and just click on that. And there we go. So 
I kind of liked how it looked in the picture there. I was only seeing the top. So if we click here on reposition, we can go ahead and just move this pizza. Boom, just like that. Hit save position. And we're off to the races. All right, so you might be thinking to yourself, cool, Eric, I got my pizza diary. I've got my icon. I've got my cover. I'm starving now looking at this pizza. What's so great about Notion? This looks like any other word processor or Google Doc or whatever. Well, I'm about to show you. And what really sets Notion apart in my mind is its blocks. So we're not gonna worry about any of this stuff right here. I'm just gonna click empty page. And again, what makes up Notion is different blocks. So as you can see right here, there's these six little dots and this little plus sign. So if I click the plus sign, uh, I'm met with all the different blocks that I could make. We could do just a basic text block. We could create another page within this page, a checkbox to-do list, different headings, a basic table, uh, bulleted lists, all that stuff. And so that's really what sets Notion apart. So for this example, I'm just gonna say, I am craving pizza because I am. So again, anywhere we're at, you know, if I press enter here, now I am in a new block and I could press the plus sign and maybe add a to-do list uh, or something like that. But there's another way that you can create blocks. You can press this forward slash button here and there we are met with that same menu. So I'm gonna go ahead, press that and we're gonna do a to-do list here. And today what I need to do is I, I need to eat pizza. You can kind of see where this is going. Um, so yeah, this is really what makes up Notion is these different blocks. You can come in here uh, and yeah, you see I went ahead and pressed enter and because I already had a to-do list going, it went ahead and just made another line of a to-do checkbox thing. So if I just press backspace here, I can press the uh, forward slash to bring up my different blocks and let's go ahead and do a toggle list. So here I'm going to put in my secret pizza recipe and I press enter and similar to the to-do list uh, when I press enter there it's going to create a new block but I want to actually add something into that toggle list so now I press it down and I can see what is inside my secret pizza recipe first things first pick up the phone call pizza shop order pizza pay for pizza. I don't have a pizza recipe. This is my pizza recipe. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you a couple different blocks here. So if we go ahead and press the slash button, we can do a heading one, and this could be favorite types of pizza. And then we could come down here to heading two and put second favorite types of pizza. I don't know. I'm just making this up here, if you couldn't tell. Uh, and we'll do a heading three and third favorite types of pizza. So that's just a basic introductory to blocks. Now, what else is kind of cool about blocks or just how to use Notion is you can go ahead and click a certain word or section of a sentence or block, uh, and then you're met with these different formatting tools. So we can bold something, we can italicize it, underline it, do a strike through, mark it as code, uh, as well as start to add some color to it. So we could actually color the text itself or create a background. We'll go ahead and just do a yellow background there uh, for, for this example. So those are some of the most basic blocks. And if you start, you can probably start to see how powerful even just those basic blocks can be. But again, Notion is a very powerful tool and it's a lot more than just headings, bulleted lists, to-do lists, and toggle lists. So I'm gonna go ahead and put, um, do three dashes here and that'll put in a divider. You could also do slash and then type in divider. And that's another way you can do that. But what I wanna show now is just a couple, like once you scroll past these basic blocks, um, you know, you can start to upload media. You can upload an image, a web bookmark, video, audio, code, upload a file like a PDF, Word document, anything like that. Um, and then there's also tons of different databases, which we'll get into in here in just a second, different AI blocks. Um, there's advanced blocks like a table of contents, 
block equations, buttons, breadcrumbs, sync blocks, toggle headings, columns, and then you can also embed just about anything. You can embed PDFs, a Google Maps, Spotify playlists, YouTube videos. Um, there's a thing here for Twitter, Google Drive. Uh, the list is, well, not exactly, but just about endless. So sometimes you create a block, but later you realize that it might work better as a different block. And Notion makes it really easy to change that. So let's first things first, uh, you can change any block by clicking on it and you see those dots to the left, those six dots. You click on that and then we'll see this turn into. I wanna turn this into a toggle heading one for my secret pizza recipe. And I don't really like the way that this looks down here, so I'm gonna do the same thing and turn this one into a bulleted list. But I don't wanna go in and click each and every one of those and turn it into a bulleted list, but Notion makes it really easy to turn multiple things into something else all at once. So what I'm going to do, when you click into any sort of block here and you see your cursor moving, you can go ahead and press the escape key and then that'll highlight it. And when it's blue like this, what you can do is you can hold shift and press down arrow. And I just pressed it twice there. And now I have those three selected. And now I can right click, turn into bulleted list. Pretty freaking sick, huh? Now, another way that you can turn one block into something else is at the end of a string of text within a block, you can press the slash key again to uh, bring up the blocks. But before just selecting one of those, if I was to just select that, like let's do uh, a to-do list, it'll make that to-do list below it. But that's not what we're trying to do here. We're trying to turn this block into something else. So you press that slash button and you type turn. And then from there, you can select anything that you want, you know, select the one that you want, or you can just keep typing. So let's say I want to turn it into a quote. And now I just turned my favorite types of pizza from a heading one into a quote. Okay, so next on the list we have moving blocks around. Now, this is one of my absolute favorite features of Notion because you can move blocks around super easily, a lot more easy than some type of WordPress or like a Google Doc or Microsoft Word or anything like that. So to move a block, what you can do is you can just, again, navigate to those six little dots to the left of the block, click it, and then from there, you can drag it up or down. So let's go ahead and just put this up at the top for an example here. But there's an even better way to move blocks. And again, so what we want to do, you want to have the block that you're trying to move selected like this one currently is. Again, if it's not highlighted like that, what you can do, you can just click on it, press escape, and now you have access to it. So the better way to move a block, at least on Mac, is you press command, shift, and then down. And that'll move that item down. Um, you can press command shift up and it'll go up and you can see um, right here it is indented under that to-do list. I can press down again and it'll get unindented. Same thing with like a bulleted list. So if we come here, I have pick up the phone selected, command shift down. And now we can see it is indented under call pizza shop. Press it one more time and that brings it back to its original space. So it's this feature alone that has me in an absolute chokehold into Notion. Anytime I'm using anything like Apple Notes, Google Docs, and I have to move something around where I have to copy and paste it somewhere else, a little part of me dies. Okay, so moving right along here, the next thing I wanna show you in this Notion journey is adding a sub page. So there's a couple different ways that we can add a new sub page or a page within a page. So to add a sub page, what we could do, we could come over here to our pizza diary on the left and we press this little plus sign to the right and there, now we can add a page inside of here. So this might be, I don't know, favorite, whoops, favorite pizza shops. And now if I press, we'll go ahead, we can just full screen that. But if we look to the left here, now we see this pizza diary and if we press that little arrow to the left, it'll show this now sub page, this favorite pizza shops. So if we click on pizza diary, the original page here, also at the bottom, we can see this favorite pizza shops. 
So that's one way to add a new page. Another way would be to um, press the slash button to bring up your basic blocks and you can just click page right there. We call this, um, I don't know, favorite drinks to drink with pizza. I don't know just making this up. Um, but now you can see that we have a, a second page over here on the navigation side. We come back to this home page and there is that second page. So another tool, um, again, we kind of went over the turning one block into another. You can also turn one block into a page. So right now we have this secret pizza recipe as a toggle list that we can, you know, open and close, but maybe we decided that it would be better off as a separate page. So we can go ahead and click on this button here, turn into page. And now instead of a list, that is its own page. Now, something else that is cool about Notion is you can sort of peek into things. You can open a page within a page without really opening it. So to do so, you hold option and just click it. And then it pulls up this sort of side view page, which can be really helpful if there's something, you know, maybe you're organizing a page like this with sub pages, but you need to reference something from the original page, this can be a really good way to do that. Okay, so something else, uh, you know, that I mentioned earlier, right, there are favorites. So now you're starting to have a couple of pages, right? We have our main pizza diary page, we have my secret pizza recipe, favorite pizza shops and favorite drinks to drink while eating pizza. Um, now let's say I don't want to have to down click over here to find favorite pizza shops or click into pizza diary to click into favorite pizza shops. What we can do is make this page a favorite. So to do that, it's super simple. We just come up here and press this little star on the page that we want. And now you can see over here in the navigation bar that there is a brand new section, the favorites section. So this can be really handy for just grouping the pages that you use often or refer to on a daily or just frequent basis. So some other basic navigation stuff within Notion, if you come up here to the top right and hit these three dots, you'll be met with some different options for this specific page. So we can go ahead and change the font from I, I typically use the default, but if you're into this serif font, you can do that, or maybe this mono. Um, there's a couple different options. You can also change from small text and full width. So by default, you know, pages within Notion are not full width. So when you press full width, what it does, it just gives you a little bit more breathing room. Um, so now you can see that the blocks are the full width of the page, whereas before it's just sort of this like narrow middle of the page. So whatever fancies you do that. But there's some other options down here too. Um, there are some different, you can customize the page uh, with how you kind of want comments and backlinks to show up. You can also lock the page. So if you're sharing this with someone, uh, they won't be able to edit it or mess with it. There's also some ways to set up notifications. You can copy the link to this page, duplicate this page. Uh, there's a shortcut to open inside peak, which I just showed you. Um, and something else, which is kind of cool is this word count down at the bottom. Um, if you're a student or something, you need to hit a certain word count, or maybe you have a writing practice where you want to, you know, hit a certain amount of words per day, this can be very helpful for that. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna talk about are databases. Now we've talked about some pretty cool stuff in Notion, and if I were you, I would already think it was so cool. But what really unlocks the power of Notion are databases. And if you're not using databases, you probably don't even need to use Notion. You could use something else. Databases are what set Notion apart. So let's go ahead. We're gonna create a new page by pressing Command N. I'm gonna press Command Enter to full screen that page. That works for anything you have in that center peak or side peak view. Press Command Enter and it will full screen it. So databases allow you to create as many different properties as you'd like. So let's go ahead and just make a basic uh, database. So I'm gonna make a gift guide for my girlfriend. So I'm gonna make a database for things that I want my girlfriend to buy me, you know, because, you know, it can be hard to, you know, it can be hard to get gifts for people. And so I'm just gonna make it really easy for her. So to, to create a database, 
we're gonna go ahead and just press the slash button and type in, we just start typing database. And you can see all the different types of databases that you can make. You can make a database inline, a database full page, uh, as well as just go straight to some different views. But let's go ahead and just show you the difference between a database inline and a database full page. So database inline puts the database on the page here, and then you can also add more data after it. So more data after it. Um, or you could also put stuff above it. So what you can also do is a database full page. So when you do that, it's going to open a new database in a full page here. So that's kind of the difference. You can't add anything below it. That being said though, this is a full page database. You can copy the link to this, copy link to view. And if we go back here, uh, we can go ahead and paste just did command V um, and create a linked view of that. So now this is that same database that we made in the full page. It's just now we can, we can make that view anywhere. And you can tell that this is a linked view because it has this little arrow next to the database title. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete both of those for now. And let's go ahead and just make this full width. So again, databases are what make things makes Notion so very powerful. So what you can do is, we'll go ahead and name this um, Eric's wish list. And we're gonna create some different properties here. So let's go ahead, we'll just right click, delete this property. And I'm gonna add a new property. Let's add a number property because I'm gonna put in pricing here uh, just so my girlfriend can know exactly how much she's gonna be spending on me. So we're gonna take this number format, turn it into US dollars, and we'll call this price, whoops, if I could spell. And then if we turn, if we click this little uh, pound sign here, we can change the icon. And we'll go ahead and just make this money because that's what that is. Um, so that's one way to add a property. Now let's add another property. So let's add a select property. So we'll call this category and we'll add a couple options in here. So I definitely want some cars. I want some cameras, uh, maybe lenses and maybe outdoor toys. Okay. So the first things first that I want is a Ford Raptor F-150 Raptor R. We want the Raptor R, that's for sure. And the price for that, eh, you know, it's chill. It's $150,000, not too bad. And we'll go ahead and put that under the cars. Uh, I also wouldn't mind a Porsche 911 GT three R S that's probably a little closer to 350,000, but that also goes under the cars. And I wouldn't mind a Sony FX three, uh, not a FX pound FX three. And that goes for 4,000, nothing bad. Uh, and you know, just to, to pair nicely with that, I could use a Sony 24 to 70, G master and that's probably 2,500 and that would go under lenses. Lastly, I wouldn't mind a specialized E bike. That's probably about $10,000 and that would go under outdoor toys. So this is a very simple, basic database. While we're here, you know, I might as well show you how you can calculate databases. So again, this list is starting to add up. It's getting pretty serious. I don't know about you, but I don't feel like doing that math in my head. So at the bottom of um, the database here, we go ahead and click calculate. And I just want to sum this value. So 516,500, um, not too bad. I wanted to keep it under a million, did so. Um, but yeah, so that's one feature that you can use here in the databases. Now, this might just look like a normal table to you or like a, a spreadsheet, like a Google sheet or something like that. But again, Notion has some pretty cool tricks up its sleeves. So if I go ahead and right click this table or just press this plus sign, we can go ahead and make a new view of this database. So let's go ahead and just show you what a board database looks like. So it automatically detected that there were 
was the select property in there and it created this board style um, of data representation and you can go ahead and change that here so if you go group by we could group that by um, by something else but this is the one that makes the most sense for this so uh, you know maybe I accidentally over here put that I also want a Sony a 7 4 camera but that's not an outdoor toy that's a camera so what I'm gonna do right now the Sony a7 IV is under the outdoor toys if I drag that over to cameras what we can do is it's it's all dynamic meaning if I come back to the table here we see that a7 IV it automatically changed it to cameras so that's pretty sick if you ask me and again like I said there are tons of different properties that you can add in here you can do basic text number select multi to select which is the same as select but instead of just being able to select one you can select multiple options for that um, something else that's very useful is the status so if we um, you know click this in you know I think she's still probably still working on, on the Ford Raptor and the Porsche 911 I think she's got that in progress she got that in progress she already got me the bike I wish um, and she already got me the a7 IV now, if we were to go to create a new board, Notion's really smart. It realized we already had a view for the uh, by category, and it now has this sort of status thing. So we can see, you know, this is really great for like projects, right? Very similar to my gift guide project, but you know, whether you're making content, whether you're doing some sort of project management or working on a team, this can be super useful. So, you know, actually turns out that um, none of these are in progress uh, so we can go ahead and move those all over to the non started and again being dynamic we can see all those variables changed just by moving them across the board so what really makes this stuff so cool is that not only can we look at data in different ways like this uh, but we can also open up each individual entry here as its own page. And we can see those properties at the top as well as you know put some information in here. So maybe I had the link to that specialized bike that I wanted and I went ahead and paste it in here. So just command V that link and let's show you what one of the embed tools look like. So if we click on this, we can go ahead and see the exact bike that it is that I want. We go ahead and full screen this page and boom there it is live on specialized website and look it's even on sale so let's go ahead update that price yeah totally chill um yeah so that is another very beneficial part of the databases is not only you have all these properties and these different ways to view this data but you can also have its own private information that relates to that specific entry in there as well and within there you can it's again this is just like any other page so you can add its own icon um, you know maybe a bike icon you can also add its own cover and boom there we go so let's go ahead and add another filter here we'll go ahead and add a date filter so um, this is going to be either for Christmas present or my birthday so let's go ahead so we'll copy all this to here and I would like the bike and the a7 IV for Christmas. So some other views that we can look at here are that are specifically by date would be calendar um, as well as timeline. So the timeline might be a better view for this. So if we go ahead and just select year, uh, that'll give us the biggest time horizon. And we can see we're in March here and there's everything that I selected for March 12th. 
And if we click these little arrows, we can go ahead and jump to that date and see the Christmas there. So I really like this view for any types of tasks or projects that I have coming up. Um, and you can easily, again, move this stuff along. Maybe I'm getting the Porsche uh, maybe Christmas came early and I got a Porsche the first day of December. Again, we go back to the table and that Porsche, the date is updated there. It's got that dynamic aspect to it. So these databases are super powerful. They can be used for just about anything, whether that's content creation, client rosters, a CRM, anything that you want to organize that fits into a certain set of properties, but each entry also needs its own individual space. Use a database. You'll be good to go. So the last um, database view to show you, actually, sorry, there's two more. So we'll come here and we'll show you the list. This is just a basic list. Um, and we come in here and we can select the different properties. Maybe I wanna see the price and the date and the status. And we can see all those properties right there. And the other view is a gallery, uh, which can be pretty cool. So you can view the gallery by either the page content or the page cover. And since there's no content or cover in any of these, um, except for the specialized e-bike that we put in there, that's all you're seeing. But this can be really helpful for viewing your content in a card-like way. So databases have a few more tricks up its sleeves. If we come up here to the filter and sort, we can specify specific parameters to show only a specific amount of results that we wanna see. So for example, we'll go ahead and hit filter, and maybe I only want to see cars. So I'll select cars, and now we're only seeing cars. Um, and maybe I wanna see it from most expensive to least expensive. So we can either click sort here, or just click on the property that we want to sort, and from here we can hit sort descending. And there you go. So filters and sorts can be very basic like this, or you could turn this into an advanced filter by clicking on the filter, hitting the three dots, and then adding it to an advanced filter where you can add tons of different rules depending on whatever it is you're trying to filter and what you want to narrow it down. So we'll go ahead and delete this filter and delete this sort for now. Right now, right, this isn't a huge database, but if you, you know, over time you start adding gifts to your gift guide, <laughs> or, you know, your database starts to has a lot of information in there, even with all these views and these filters, sometimes you just wanna be able to search it. And so what you can do is you can come up here to this little eyeglass here and search for whatever it is that you want. So if you maybe just type in camera, now it's just gonna show anything where there is a camera, or maybe I just wanted to look up that Ford, and it will pull up that result for you right there. So that was about as brief of an introduction to databases as I could keep it. The next thing I wanna talk briefly about is the import feature within Notion. Now, I don't really use this feature a lot, but there is one aspect that I do use it. So if we come over here to the left-hand side, we can see import. And here we have a bunch of different options to import something from, like Asana, Confluence, Google Docs, um, what have you. But the one thing, again, I, don't have, I haven't used this a whole lot, but the one thing that I have used it a lot for is importing markdown folders. Now, I have this other software, which we'll talk about another day. Comment down below if you wanna hear about it. It's called MindNode. It's essentially just a mind mapping way to visualize anything. Um, and I really like that as sort of like a brainstorming step in my process, whether that be coming up with a video idea, putting together a project, what have you. And then what I can do is I can export that as a markdown from my node, import it as a markdown into Notion, and it's gonna maintain all those headers and just make it look really nice and pretty without any effort on my part. The next thing I wanna show you here is just a full Notion search. So I showed you how to search within a database, but maybe you just need to find something really quickly and you don't feel like going and digging around for it. And so Notion made it really easy to search for things. And so if we come up here to the top left, we can go ahead and just search for anything. Maybe I wanted my secret pizza recipe and there it is. Another way you can just quickly get to search is by hitting Command K 
and that will bring up that same search bar. So maybe I wanted to find that Ford Raptor R and boom, there it is. All right, the last thing I wanted to cover here on this intro to Notion is how to share a Notion page. Um, maybe you are friends with another pizza lover and you want to share your pizza diary with them so that they can create their own pizza diary Notion template. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna come up here to the top right, hit share. And what you can do is you can invite uh, one or many people by email um, as a guest to your Notion workspace or your Notion page. And if you click this invite only, you can lock it to only you and people invited have access to it or anyone with the link at Eric Hunsker's Notion, everyone at Eric Hunsker's Notion. That's one way to share a Notion page. Another way is to come up and hit this publish button. And if you hit publish here, then you have some different options. And as you can see right now, this page is currently live on the internet. So if we go ahead and hit view site, that would pull you over to your web browser and it would show up just like any other web page. Now we have some different options here as well. You can set a link expiration um, if you have the plus plan, it looks like. <laughs> uh, so we'll go back to share, publish. You can also add different um, permissions here. So if you you know, you didn't want your friend to edit this. You just wanted them to duplicate it as a template. You would leave it just as is. You wouldn't turn on editing, but you would leave allow duplicate as template. Um, you can also turn commenting on and off, search index, search engine indexing on or off. Um, and yeah, and so this is a cool way to, again, share. Maybe you just have something that you wanna share with someone and it's in your notion. So you could set it up like that, publish it to the web, send it to them, and they have an easy link that they can open on any device. Or maybe you're starting to create some cool Notion templates and you want to be able to either just give them away or sell them, that's where that duplicate as template button comes in. Um, and so anyone who has a link to this can then duplicate the exact same template that you have and edit it to their own desires. So this was just a basic introduction to Notion. I have been using it for a couple of years now and I absolutely love it. I use it for just about everything. But if there was anything else that was unclear or anything that you want me to go further on, like go deeper into databases and show you how I use them in my own workflow, go ahead and comment down below. Um, and I would be more than happy to make a video on that. But in the meantime, I just wanna say thank you if you're still watching this video. And if you haven't already, go ahead, hit that like button, consider subscribing. It would really help me out and it would allow me to make more videos just like this, which is what I absolutely love doing. So again, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Now go out and create something in Notion. Peace.